Hey there, my name is Shane Craddock and this is the Inner Edge podcast where I share a different take on how to lead and live a sustainable high performance life. Over the course of different episodes, I'm going to challenge the belief that tension, stress and struggle are essential to success and creativity. My experience is that there's an easier way, there's a better way and indeed there's an essential way that we need to explore for the times that we live in. So let's go ahead, let's jump in and explore. Hi there, welcome to today's episode, uh, which has been inspired, I guess, by a little event I was at recently, where it just so happened that uh, a chunk of my clients were, it was a social event, but a chunk of my clients were there, um, and we were just, I guess, chatting about different things, relaxing, and a conversation started about different things that they'd done, um, and things that they'd learned, I think, from some of the work with myself around using your mind and, you know, things that they they had achieved uh, and the power of the mind and the mindset. And what came out of that discussion on reflection as I was listening, it was a very enjoyable discussion listening to people talking about challenges they'd overcome, uh, impossible goals that they'd achieved. And uh, it was quite enjoyable. And they were talking in particular about the power of imagination. And I suppose maybe at the back of my mind since that event, those that conversation, I've been reflecting on it. And what's very clear to me, and I've said this um, perhaps on other podcasts, certainly said it because it's part of my work, that you're the designer and the creator of your future, but you may not realize the full power of your ability because most people, I think, don't. Now, I'm... Part of my job is to help pe- people create a better future for themselves. Uh, sometimes that's as individuals. Sometimes it's within a leadership capacity or within an organization. Um, and I don't see myself as being somebody who um, <laughs> does the person's work. Very often I'm lucky to work with very smart, ambitious, creative, motivated people. If anything, my job at times, I, th- I feel as I go along in my career, is probably to unblock people free them up, maybe help them to open their minds and recognize their ability. But I'm wondering as you're listening to this, wherever you're listening to it, yeah, I've set myself a little challenge maybe to help you do it a little bit more today, perhaps to enhance and leverage that creative ability that you have. Now, when I say creative, I don't mean artistic. I just mean literally your ability to make something happen, to bring something in that you can imagine. And that expands the definition of creativity. When I first started to get into this kind of area, um, I don't know whether you call it development, personal development, inner world work, inner game, whatever you want to call it. One of the exercises that I came across, I can't remember from who, but it was to write a letter to yourself from the future. And I did this letter. Now, I can't remember the time. I think it might have been five years. I said, right, five years time. Shane, what's the best you can see? What would you like to see in your life? And I wrote the letter. I wrote it in pencil. I wrote it in a little book, a little kind of notebook. And then I forgot about it. And like a lot of things like this, I don't know if you've ever done something like that or maybe been at a workshop and wrote, written down maybe something that you want. And then you forgot about it, but found it years later. Well, I find mine years later, maybe seven years later. And it was fascinating because things I'd written down were things like these. I want to work for myself. At the time now, I was working in a corporate, big multinational. So didn't see a pathway to work for myself. Um, and I also had a very specific type of job in the business world, which wasn't what I wanted to be doing, but I didn't really know fully clearly what I wanted to be doing other than I wrote down, I want to be doing work or I am doing work that makes a positive difference to people. I also specifically wrote down that I wanted to have a balance of male and female friends um, because at the time I didn't really have any female friends and I wanted to have female friends. I also wanted to meet that special person that I you know, would want to build a life with and that happened by the time I refound the letter. I wanted to change my physical shape. I wanted to have more muscle. I wanted to be stronger. And mentally, I wanted to be a certain way, which was more present and more positive. And all of those things in that letter happened. And there were certain specific scenes. I don't have the letter in front of me right now. Otherwise, I would read it for me directly, but I have it somewhere in an attic, so I can't find it. But I'm telling you the truth. But what's funny is because of my experience with that, I still do that with clients where I'll ask them to say, hey, you know, at the start of a year, I'll say, imagine you're having a dinner at the end of the year. 
uh, go to that dinner in your mind and pretend that you're talking to the people around you and saying, asking them, like, what was great about your year? And then it comes to your turn and say, right, what do you want to be saying? And, and, and imagine that first and then write it. The imagination bit is the key. Um, I'm not going to go into all the, I don't know, the, maybe the science, but also the magic of that on this particular podcast. But something happens that is not fully explainable, but from experience of working with a lot of people and in my own life, it does work. And I think about a quote from a guy called Peter Drucker, who's a, a renowned management consultant, maybe the original business consultant from America. He says, you can't predict the future, but you can create it. And in my experience, I know that that's true. Now, on a later episode, I'm probably going to challenge the predicting the future thing because weirdly, um, they've kind of shown <laughs> that certain people with a certain mindset can almost get a glimpse of the future. Um, is that predicting the future? Maybe a little bit. Certainly, I think a lot of entrepreneurs can almost predict the future. They can tap into something, see something happening. That's a different conversation. But you definitely can create the future. So how do you do that? Well, I think, first of all, you need to kind of believe that you can. And I'm guessing, or maybe you could reflect on this and say, like, where in your life have you done that? Where have you created uh, what you wanted? Because for most people, they kind of, when they do it, they don't really recognize it. And then they forget about the fact that they did it. So you need to believe that you can. And then obviously you need to then imagine what's the future you want to create. And then number three, you obviously have to take action. But a lot of people even if they imagine something, if they don't have the belief there. And I remember, like, the belief just is, is key, but it's so subtle because that's the thought. A thought there can actually shut you down, as in I don't believe that I can do this, or I can actually light you up and say, yeah, let's give it a go. I remember when, you know, if you, if you when I was depressed, in the middle of depre my depression, whatever, 30 years ago, you know, trying to do that writing that letter was very challenging because my mind was fighting against me in terms of like, you know, that inner voice. Who do you think you are? You can't do that. Um, but I still persisted. It wasn't easy. And I can't say that at that time I probably even believed it. But when I found the letter, I do remember kind of taking a moment going, hang on a second here. This seems to make a difference because everything in that letter had happened. Now, is that just a fluke? No, it's not a fluke because I've seen it replicated by hundreds of people, maybe more. I've seen it replicated by myself. So if I was going back to, my, to Shane back at 30 years ago, I'd say to him, Shane, I can't maybe fully explain this to you, but actually think bigger, my friend, dream bigger, <laughs> and then just go for it. Now, I think you can actually even use this with challenging things because you know people get sick people die you can't change that that's reality you mightn't like it but it can influence how you are in those situations how you are after them it doesn't mean you've got to die, deny reality but certainly using your imagination to shape the path ahead of you to shape what's to come to shape how you want to be in a gentle way that definitely makes an impact I'm thinking of a situation over the last few months where I uh, had a situation, I can't say exactly what it is because if I say exactly kind of the parameters, some people listening to this podcast may know, they may identify the situation. <laughs> but I had a situation where, uh, you know, you're, you're meeting up with people in potentially emotionally charged situation, you know, like maybe a Christmas time situation or something like that. And maybe historically you've got memories where it doesn't end up well. People get funny at Christmas, you know, it's an emotional time. Um, but in this situation, I said, oh, let's change it up here in my mind. Instead of replaying the past, past memories or imagining not so good futures, let's play the best. Let, what can I imagine that's the best? And so I just spent some time imagining that. And I can't say it's all down to what I imagine, but certainly all I can say to you is that the situation was completely different to anything I'd seen before. It was actually really enjoyable and came very close to what I'd seen in my mind. So I wonder, can you relate to that? It's funny when that event where I was just saying at the very start of the podcast that the people were talking about all, all the different things over the years that they had created, that they had achieved. I will say this, they all had one thing in common, apart from the fact that they allowed themselves to kind of go for something that seemed impossible. They all took action towards their desired outcomes. 
they all took action. And they didn't talk about that. That's something I'd, I'd observe. They were action takers because obviously if you don't take action, ain't nothing going to happen. But if you're listening to this podcast, I'd assume you already know that. But even the best of the best can sometimes have blind spots inside themselves where certain beliefs or thoughts are blocking them. Well, what would, ha- what would happen if you just ignored it? That's the bit that I like. So what would you like to create by the end of this year? Or maybe you want to extend it out further, like I did in my letter and say five years, three years, 10 years. I don't know. What's your choice? But whatever time frame for the fun, uh, go to that in your mind. See yourself in that moment or at that time and write a letter to yourself from the future back to your self now. But don't do what I did and uh, put it in a place that was a bit random, nearly got lost. Uh, put it somewhere, maybe in a box that you know you look at again. Uh, but I will point out three watchouts with this kind of stuff. Three big watchouts. Uh, they, probably each one of these points deserves its own podcast episode, so we might do that again at some point. The first one is don't stay in your imagination uh, because if you do that, which a lot of achievers do, a lot of achievers do, this is almost like the achiever's Achilles heel, that you, you lose your ability to enjoy life because your your enjoyment of life you know, it's not about staying in your mind, in your thoughts. It's about being in the present moment. So developing the skill of being present is really important. Really, really important. It's important to have the balance of both. Um, I kind of talk about this a bit in my new book, The Inner CEO, which is coming out um, at the end of April, the 1st of May is the deadline we're working towards. So maybe if that's of interest, you can dig into that. The second watch out is around um, just being aware that a lot of your goals and what you want to see are very informed by your ego but also your level of awareness and I think that's where that's what I've learned over the years is that it's very important to keep working on yourself doing the inner work and it's very very important because it'll just help you to see areas of your life where you're just more tuned into the the authentic you but that requires you to to work on yourself to spend time to invest in yourself um, to do that inner work which isn't easy but that's the game changer from what I've seen. And then the third watch out is just because you're dreaming the best, imagining the best and maybe even creating the best, it doesn't mean that SH1T isn't going to happen. You know, I'm just hopefully saying something you already know anyway. Life has its own plans. Uh, Some of those plans are, I guess, where I'm meant to be or where to go and things happen. I can't always predict why things are happening at all because life is just a mystery I guess but usually even in the tough times the most difficult SH1T times uh, there's often huge benefits if I just go with the river of life and I guess I see our job as being adapting to reality but making it better whatever it is what's that saying you know you get lemon, lemons you make lemonade so there are three watchouts but not the point I'm making today, really. The point I'm making t- in today's episode is that you are able to shape your future. You're, you're a creator. So what do you want to create? That's it for this week. Ciao for now. <laughs>